Hello everyone and welcome back to SEO Online with Victor Campos. For week three, I've got a new handout for you. Campos SEO3 backlinks file. So I'm going to open it up. We'll take a look at it and we'll apply what I'm talking about here. This handout is all about a backlinks strategy. Nowadays, the search engines care about quality content more than ever. The ranking of your website is elevated when quality sites link to it. Backlinks, then, are very important to create authority and quality on your website, which in turn raises your page rank. So this exercise will be about using the webmaster tools to see what links are pointing to your site, because that's the crux of this week that we need links from other reputable websites pointing to ours. We need other websites linking to our website. I mention here the books, the optional books, 2016 and beyond, SEO book and SEO checklist. You can check out those books yourself and see if they are useful to you. I think they are. And um, they're not that expensive. So what we need to do is find where our backlinks are, organize them, take advantage of those backlinks, and deal with the bad ones. I'm going to start with Bing Webmaster Tools first. So if you load up your web browser and go to bing.com slash toolbox, you'll be able to log in. So I've got an account already set up. And not only do I teach uh, these concepts, I'm also part of a company that we do this. So we've got it set up with various clients and a bunch of data. The way we read the screen is that we've got a website, we've got some form of uh, online presence on the left side, various columns. If you've got uh, messages here, like problems with your site, they will be listed here and you can deal with them. Then we get clicks from search and then appeared in search. Appeared in search is the concept of impressions. How many times was your website seen by people? And then clicks from search is conversions. How many clicks did you get from those views? Pages crawled is that uh, the search engine, in this case Bing, looks at your website, crawls around it, and tries to find information and content on your site. If it then finds information that it feels is new or relevant, it adds it to the index. It adds it to the database that Bing or Google save when people search. So there are some numbers here that are green, some that are blue, some that are red. I cannot say, make sure every number here is green, although that's what you want to lean toward, green positive numbers. Um, but it depends. For example, I've got a time period up here of 30 days. If I were to change that to a longer time period, three months for example, this is a more accurate result. This is a more accurate view of your results. This is where you're trying to get more greens as much as possible. The longer you have your webmaster tool set up, the more data is collected and the more accurate the data is. Just like in the stock market, if you look at financial news and in one day a company lost value, well, that's bad for the day, but how did that company do the whole week? How did that company do the whole month, the whole year? Five years. Just like in the stock market, the longer time horizon you have, the better data you have in the search engines. So if I only look at seven days of data and I've got a 200% increase in clicks, that's amazing. But if I look at it in 30 days, okay, it's 33% more clicks than the previous time period. And if I look in three months, it's 10% more. All of those are still good, but notice again, a more accurate result is more time. I'm going to open one of these example sites so that we can get deeper into the handout. So as an overview here, once you start collecting data, this will be much more meaningful. So I set my time horizon. This particular client then says 200% percent 
increase in clicks from search in real numbers that was three clicks from the previous time it was one click this site appeared 43 times more than the period before that an increase of 437 percent so in that time period 28 pages indexed as opposed to 24 index last time so it found a few more pages that is if you're adding new content to your site it will then uh, add it to the index errors there were less errors on the site which is always good sitemaps if you have a sitemap and you've submitted it to the search engines they will scan the site map and then help with crawling your site to find all relevant content the search engines will tell us what keywords people have been searching for that helped find your site and how much they are valuable to you if you intend to in engage in PPC in paying per click. Inbound links is what we're heading toward in a moment. These are the links that are pointing to your site. And then we've got various diagnostic tools. So on the left we can get into much more detail to all of these items but for the moment let's focus on backlinks. We need to go to the from the dashboard to reports and data to inbound links. I'm in the dashboard, reports and data, inbound links. Within this time period, there have been more links that are pointing to this site. Bing will tell you the target page. The home page at the moment gets the most links, 112, and then this blog post is 8. I can get a preview by clicking either of those links and this tells you that the source address on the left was attached to some text on the right so this particular site linked to this client and this site and this site and so forth I can export that data if I want I'll explain why you might want to do that soon if I look at my second example, again these are links from external websites pointing to a particular page on this client site. The whole point of backlinks and why they're useful for SEO is that this shows you legitimacy and authority. If another website such as couchdb.org points to this website and that website is relevant that increases the relevance of your website and therefore the ranking and standing on the search engines. This particular page on this client site is a blog post about a technology called PouchDB, a database. And there's a link coming from CouchDB, the parent project of PouchDB, a very legitimate business pointing to a blog post on this client. Various links from NolanLawson.com. Mr. Lawson is a big name in the world of PouchDB development, and so a link from his site to the client site is also a very good one. So this screen then lists all of the links pointing to your site. Well, what's the value of that? If we read further in our document, organizing your backlinks, download your links and compile them in a spreadsheet document. Review them periodically, add notes, and highlight colors. All right, so what that would be is that if I were to click on Export All, this would wish to download a spreadsheet file. I'm going to save it, and then I'm going to open it. So I'm going to open the file, and it's just a collection of links and text. The value of this is that it lists all of the pages that you're linking to and where the link came from. The value of this is that we need to check which links are legitimate and which links are illegitimate. We will see that in Bing.com and Google.com we can't really organize our links very well and we really want to. So that's why we're downloading the file. Because what I can do then is when I open it in my spreadsheet program I can sort it here it is in order of particular websites. This makes it then easier to understand what is the website and, what, and how it's linking to the particular site. At the moment all of these links appear to be legitimate. 
And this is one of the things that is difficult to teach in this class. What is a legitimate and what is an illegitimate link? You get better at this, you get better at spotting this the longer you do it. You will see that there are many websites out there with spam addresses. Freeclicks.com, MakeMoneyFast.net, SEOOptimizerProWizard.org. You'll start to spot them a mile away as soon as you lay eyes on their names. And some are more difficult to figure out if they're spam links or not. Oftentimes you will have to follow the link to see if it's a spam link or not. Make sure your antivirus software is up to date. All right, this is a starting point. Review them periodically because what you want to do is either take advantage of the good backlinks or deal with the bad backlinks. Now that you have a backlinks report, you can create more authority for your site. The tactic is to link quality content to the links that link to your own site. For example, tweet about a positive restaurant review. On Facebook, post a link to your blog post that positively reviewed your product. In the book, the strategy is outlined best in the section Backlinks to Backlinks. The more good content that is pointed to sites that link to you, the more your SEO rank could increase. This takes a lot of work, but could pay off very well. All right, so what I mean here, tangibly, is I need to follow some of these links to see how to deal with them. So first, I'm going to open this particular link. This opens up something known as Olempo.com, the SEO system for local businesses. Taking a quick look at it here, this is a spam website. It's just trying to aggregate random information online. It looks like it's a registry site, but these are a dime a dozen. These can be created very easily and quickly by spammers. And so with an ugly logo sort of like that, full of ads and such, this is a spam site. This would mark then, this would then fall under a negative link. So I'm going to mark this with a color to show that it's negative. Let's see if I can find a positive one. So this is a legitimate link that points to the client's site. It's on topic, it's popular, it's populated, and it points to a blog post of the client. So I'd mark this one as a good link. Okay, so I would need to go through these on a regular basis, such as once a month, to determine what's good and what's bad. If it's a good link, then I need to promote it. I need to engage in a little self-promotion, which then brings traffic back to the client. So for example, I could share this link on some social media. The tactic is to share on social media a link to what is positively referencing you. So this is a bit of self-promotion where you are also helping the original promoter. This takes time and effort to craft. This is not a social media class, but the point is basically you're going to share on Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, whatever, something that positively mentions or identifies you, that's your backlink, with a little self-promotion in the hopes of getting more attention for you. So I would share that and that may cause more traffic from the original link back to your backlink which elevates your ranking. It does take time and effort but it's part of modern SEO. That is social media is part of modern search engine optimization. So if I've identified and done something about a good link what do I do about a bad link? That's where the next part of the handout comes in. Both Google and Bing provide the disavow links tool to minimize the impact of bad links. Bad links could cause your website to also lose luster, that is, drop in the rankings, because it's guilt by association. If your website is pointed to by a bunch of spam websites, 
the search engines will think you're a spam website and lower your rankings. Once we identify the spam websites, then we can disavow. So in Bing, I can go to my dashboard, configure my site, disavow links. Dashboard, configure my site, disavow links. And the way it will work is I either submit a page, directory, or domain. Page would be that there's some website that is negative, that is spam and detrimental. So you're telling Bing, don't pay attention to that page. Don't let it hurt my rankings. Well, oftentimes a bad website is not going to simply be one page that is bad. So we have the option of directory. Everything in that directory is bad, is negative, is spammy, is off topic. Please disavow it. Well, again, the spammers are not known for finesse. So most of the time, you will have to disavow the whole domain. It is a negative domain completely, so you tell the search engine to take it out. This will not actually unlink their website from yours, but it will tell the search engines to stop paying attention to the traffic. So the way I would do this is I would pull up my spreadsheet. I would then select the address, just the .com portion, add it to the box under domain, and disavow. It'll take some time then for the search engines to process this, but at least you're showing the search engines you are a legitimate webmaster and you take these things seriously. Let's do the same thing with Google. Go to google.com slash webmasters and log in. So after you sign in, then you get your data and once you've set it all up, you'll be able to retrieve the data. Setting it up, of course, was last week. So I'm going to pull up the same client information. And of course, as we saw previously, the tricky part about Google Search Console is that it asks you to set up the WW version and the non-WW version, which means you might get two bits of data. So I'm going to take a quick look to see which is more relevant. It looks like the WW version will be the relevant one. So that's the one we're going to look at in Google Search Console. Site dashboard, search traffic, links to your site. Site traffic, links to your site. Google will show similar data than Bing, just in a different kind of way. So it shows here 55 links to the home page. 14 links to this blog page, and so forth. Clicking in any one of these will give you more data. So here are the various domains that are linking to your site. You might be able to see, for example, clear.com. It's a little iffy. The good thing is at least uh, Google is giving you a preview of the website in so you don't have to click on it, which will then help you disavow or positively deal with the links. So if I were to go to your most linked content, I just get a different sort of perspective on the data. I can download the latest links and it'll be a table somewhat like I've seen before which then we can organize. I have it organized by date at the moment, but then I can organize it and again categorize it. So let's say I'm going to follow one of these links. So when I find a good result, again, I would mark it so that I can come back to it and perhaps share it on some social media. And when I find a negative result, I could go through the process of disavowing. The disavow process in Google is a little more complex. You cannot access the disavow tool directly. You must search Google disavow tool or follow the link. Select your site and click disavow links. You will prepare, as per the instructions, a list of your bad backlinks. 
you will upload a text file with these links. So we're going to see that with Google it takes a little bit more effort to disavow and it should make sense because Google is the larger search engine and you don't want to accidentally shoot yourself in the foot. So once I get to the location I then need to select well which of my properties will I disavow there's information here more information if you skip that it'll show you the information on this next screen it'll tell you that this is advanced and that it could be detrimental unless you know what you're doing and if you're in this class hopefully you're learning what you need to do so once I disavow once again it'll give me more information I have to upload a text file if I still feel a little daunted I could back up and perhaps actually take a moment to read that information. It is a bit of a read, not too complex, but what it's telling us is you need to create a text file with notes and explanation about what you've been trying to accomplish regarding negative domains and then you specify those domains in this format and upload the file. So if you're on Windows, the plain old Notepad app will do the job. If you're on a Mac, text edit should work just fine. And basically, as per the instructions, you need to write comments with the pound sign. Spam site is in need of a disavow. And then you list its domain based on your spreadsheet. So yasni.com in this case, after doing the research, I determined that that's not a good site to have linked. I would then save this file, give it a name with the date perhaps because you will be checking your content and disavowing it as time progresses. And then I'm ready to start to disavow. I would upload that file, submit it, and have Google start to deal with that shady website. Lastly, we'll look over at the Google Analytics. So you can go to google.com slash analytics. Once you're set up, again, you'll be able to track your data you get a general sense but you'll get more once you click through so you get various bits of data as your time horizon is set so to find the backlinks that Google Analytics tells us click the property on the left we go to acquisition and then all traffic and referrals so we've got these various screens one is the acquisition screen. Inside of all traffic, we then get referrals. We're being referred to by another website. So let's see here. With this particular client in this particular time period, there were many referrals over from t.co, which is Twitter's referral system don't mark that as negative referrals from Google Plus another positive one but then we get social buttons HHH dot XYZ hopefully with very little SEO training you can tell that that is a spam site EU cookie law blog post dot com now this one's tricky because there is a European Union cookie law in effect but this is probably capitalizing upon it and is not legitimate. Flipboard, which is a news aggregator site, more Google Plus links, 199 SEO, probably spam. Cookie Law Blog WordPress, again, related to the European Union cookie law, uh, probably pretty safe to ignore that one, or I would further go and test it. FixWebsiteErrors.com spam and spin 2016.cf I'm not sure what nation CF is but it's probably spam 
So this can also be downloaded, export. We have various formats. We often want CSV, which is a spreadsheet format. And you get another spreadsheet, which has data similar to other data you've seen, but it never hurts to see your data from every angle. And now the whole point of this is to determine who is legitimately linking to you and who is not. Websites will want to link to you if you have content that they want to link to. It sounds obvious, but that's the hard part. Content. On the next video, next week, we will talk about content creation strategies. Because if you have content that people want, then that's what's going to get you the traffic. This is an example of a client. And there is a tutorial here on a web technology known as PouchDB to build databases. And so this tutorial got a lot of activity, links, traffic and such, to the client. Many social shares, for example. So when we come back next week, we will talk about creating content that will get you links and traffic. This has been Victor Campos.